Rizgar Yakalamaki Chin Beer say. Wind driven waves would cause a drifting vessel to turn dangerously side on to the weather. However, such waves could be safely navigated by making the arc steer itself with a wind catching obstruction on the bow. To be effective, this obstruction must be large enough to overcome the turning effect of the waves. While many designs could work, the possibility shown here reflects the high stems which were a hallmark of ancient ships. Ramps Ramps help to get animals and heavy loads between decks. Running them across the hull avoids cutting through important deck beams, and this location is away from the middle of the hull where bending stresses are highest. This placement also better utilizes the irregular space at bow and stern. Something to catch the water. To assist in turning the arc to point with the wind, the stern should resist being pushed sideways. This is the same as a fixed rudder or skeg that provides directional control. There are many ways this could be done, but here we are reflecting the mysterious stern extension seen on the earliest large ships of the Mediterranean. Coincidentally, certain aspects of this design appear in some of the earliest large ships depicted in pottery from Mesopotamia, which is not long after the flood. It makes sense that shipwrights, who are conservative as a rule, would continue to include elements of the only ship to survive the global flood, Noah's Ark. Scripture gives no clue about the shape of Noah's Ark beyond its proportions that are given in Genesis 6:15, which reads, And this is how you shall make it, the length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, its width 50 cubits, and its height 30 cubits, and KJV. Scripture does not record direction-keeping features attached to the ark. They might have been obvious to a 500-year-old, or perhaps they were common among ships in Noah's day as they were afterwards. At the same time, the brief specifications in Genesis make no mention of other important details, such as storage of drinking water, disposal of excrement, or the way to get out of the ark. Obviously Noah needed to know how many animals were coming, but this is not recorded either. Was Noah's Ark the biggest ship ever built? Few wooden ships have ever come close to the size of Noah's Ark. One possible challenge comes from the Chinese treasure ships of Yang He in the 1400s. An older contender is the ancient Greek trireme Tesseract on Tears. At first historians dismissed ancient Greek claims that the Tesseract on Tears was 425 feet, 130 meters, long. But as more information was learned, the reputation of these early shipbuilders grew markedly. One of the greatest challenges to the construction of large wooden ships is finding a way to lay planks around the outside in a way that will ensure little or no leaking, which is caused when there is too much movement between the planks. Apparently, the Greeks had access to an extraordinary method of planking that was lost for centuries, and only recently brought to light by marine archaeology. It is not known when or where this technique originated. Perhaps they used a method that began with the Ark. After all, if the Greeks could do it, why not Noah? The Ark is near the maximum size that is known to be possible for a wooden vessel. How many people built the Ark? The Bible tells us how many people were on board the Ark, but it does not tell us how many people were involved in building it. While we would not be dogmatic on this point, it is consistent with God's word to believe that more than eight people were involved in the Ark's construction. A possibility is that Noah hired people to help him build the ark. Notice that the Bible tells us how many people were on board the ark, but it does not tell us how many people were involved in building it. God told Noah to build it and gave him specifications regarding the ark's construction materials, Genesis 6:14, size, Genesis 6:15, and cargo, Genesis 6:18-21. Genesis also reveals that mankind was extremely wicked in the days before the flood. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually, Genesis 6 5. Several verses later, we are told, the earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth, Genesis 6 11 to 12. Sandwiched between these two passages is a brief description of Noah, who found grace in the eyes of the Lord. He is also described as a just man who walked with God and was blameless in his time, Genesis 6 8 9. Construction crew for the Ark. The Ark encounter picture of the Ark's construction depicts roughly two dozen people building the boat. 
There are a couple of possibilities as to who these people could have been. First, they could have been additional family members. Although Genesis mentions Noah's sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, it does not tell us about his extended family. He may have had many brothers and sisters who might have been willing to help with the project. The genealogy in Genesis 5 lists the age of each of Noah's ancestors when his son of record was born and at his death. It is interesting to note that Methuselah, Noah's grandfather, died in the year the flood started and Lamech, Noah's father, died five years before that. So they may have helped with the construction of the ark. However, in our picture the ark is nearly complete, so it is unlikely that these men were involved at this point in the construction. Another possibility is that Noah hired people to help him build the ark. The Bible does stress the wickedness of man prior to the flood, but just like today, ungodly people may have been willing to work for a godly man. As a preacher of righteousness, 2 Peter 2 5, Noah could have used this opportunity to proclaim God's message to unbelievers working for him. There is also a possibility that Noah employed the use of animals for hauling and lifting heavy loads or other purposes. He may have also had access to sophisticated mechanisms and technology that people have not considered. How many animals were on Noah's Ark? Even without bacteria, fungi, plants, and sea creatures on the Ark, lots of species remain to be accounted for. The key is to understand the word used in scripture, kind, Hebrew men. The Bible does not say God brought every individual or every species to Noah. However, it does give us excellent clues on how many kinds of animals were on the ark. We've all seen images of giraffes, zebras, and elephants boarding Noah's Arkansas but what did Noah's floating zoo really look like? The answer is sure to surprise us, and to remind us that there's much more to the ark than we ever imagined. Few people realize just how many bizarre-looking creatures once made Earth their home, boomerang-headed amphibians, car-sized reptiles that ate plants, and giant, horned, elephant-sized mammals that look like beasts from Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings. These are just some of the amazing creatures known to paleontologists but little known to the general public. These and many other extinct animals belong to kinds completely different from anything living today. Did Noah have to make room for all these creatures, too? After all, every kind of air-breathing land animal had to be on the ark. No matter how rare an animal is, a representative of its kind had to board the ark. Yet how could they fit, especially since the number of named animal species, living and extinct, exceeds one million? First Step, Biblical Clues The first step is to examine the Bible to see what instructions God gave to Noah concerning animals and the ark. Only living creatures, Hebrew, Nepesh, were to be brought on the ark, Genesis 6 19-20, 7-2-3, 7-8-9. That excludes plants, bacteria, and fungi. The only plants brought on board the ark were used for food. All other plants were presumably left outside. Also excluded were fish and other aquatic organisms. After all, Noah did not need to build an aquarium for the ark. Noah's job was to care only for flying creatures and air-breathing land animals, bring into the ark two of all living creatures, male and female, to keep them alive with you. Two of every kind of bird, of every kind of animal and of every kind of creature that moves along the ground will come to you to be kept alive, Genesis 6 18-20, NIV. The term living creatures is the same as in Genesis 1, which includes birds, larger domestic and wild animals, and small, scurrying animals. This list likely includes small vertebrates, such as rodents and lizards, and possibly invertebrates, such as insects. Drawing the line for ark kinds. Over one million animal species have been named, but it's a mistake to assume all were on the ark. The Bible says Noah took only air-breathing land animals. So that excludes sea creatures and possibly insects and other invertebrates. Of the land vertebrates, there are only around 33,000 named living species, and a few thousand more fossil species. These are divided into fewer than 10,000 genera and 1,000 families. So how many kinds of animals were on the ark? The answer depends on which modern taxonomic level, order, family, genus, or species, represents each original kind. A 1996 study assumed the genus, but the new ark encounter is evaluating each family.